Hello, I'm Nilanjan Ghosh from the Levine Cancer Institute in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm here to state that uh, lysocell or lysocaptogen cell is a CAR T cell therapy, which is uh, an option for treatment for a relapsed refractory large B cell lymphoma in patients who are not intended for stem cell transplantation based on the results of the pilot study. So uh, we know that uh, patients who fail frontline immunotherapy for large B cell lymphoma are considered suitable for, uh, for uh, uh, have been, uh, you know, high dose chemotherapy followed by stem cell transplant. Uh, and historically, uh, uh, some of these patients can be salvaged. However, many patients uh, who are, are not intended for stem cell transplant, and the, uh, for these patients, there were no effective uh, standard of care treatments and the outcomes were very poor. So the pilot study looked at uh, this patient population and um, you know, was uh, uh, patients with relapsed refractory large cell lymphoma were included in the study and patients were allowed to get uh, bridging therapy. In order to be eligible for this study, patients had to be deemed as uh, not eligible for transplant uh, by their treating uh, physician. And they also had to uh, meet one of uh, several transplant non-intended criteria, which included age of uh, 70 or above, a creatinine clearance of less than 60, uh, a lowered ejection fraction on their, uh, on their echocardiogram, or an ECOG performance status of two, or an uh, abnormal uh, pulmonary function test. Uh, so majority of patients uh, met this criteria by age. There were um, nearly 80% of patients were of 70 or older, but uh, there, the, the, there were several patients who also met criteria because of uh, poor renal function or eco performance status of two. And about a third of the patients had um, two or more of these transplant non-intended criteria. So uh, on this study, uh, they were, uh, the median age was actually 74 and the oldest patient was 84 years old. 54% um, uh, of patients were refractory and 21% uh, of patients had relapsed less than 12 months. And importantly, uh, you know, there were uh, several patients who had an LDH, which was above the upper limit of normal. Uh, and so this was, and we also looked at HCTCI scores, and uh, there were 44% of patients who had HCTCI score of, uh, of three or higher. So in this uh, difficult to treat patient population, uh, the overall response rate was great at 80%. And in fact, 54% of patients achieved a complete response. Complete responses were durable and the median duration of response for complete responders was uh, nearly 22 months. Uh, when we looked at the subgroups, uh, this, uh, you know, the CR rates were similar across multiple subgroups, including patients with high HCTCI score, those who had ECOG performance status of two, those who underwent bridging therapy, those who had LDH above the upper limit of normal. Uh, the, in terms of um, uh, progression-free survival for patients, for all patients, the progression-free survival was nine months. And for patients who achieved a complete response, the progression-free survival and event-free survival were 23 months. Uh, overall survival, median overall survival was not reached. And uh, it was uh, also better for patients who, were, who had achieved a complete response. Uh, so, you know, when we think of this, uh, you know, elderly patient population with comorbidities, we also, uh, you know, worry about adversary events. There were no safety, new safety signals in this patient population. Uh, the most common adverse events were neutropenia, fatigue, and CRS. Uh, CRS was actually, uh, when we looked at all grade CRS, uh, only 38% of patients had any grade CRS, and majority of those CRS was grade one and two, which were uh, easily managed. Uh, grade three CRS was seen in only one patient. And in terms of neurotoxicity, only 31% of patients had any grade neurotoxicity. And again, majority were uh, grade one and two with only three patients having uh, having grade three neurotoxicity. There were no patients who had grade four or five CRS on neurotoxicity. Uh, 
Zolimab was used in some patients. Uh, and uh, yeah, there was only one patient who actually needed more than one tocilizumab dose. So very uh, low use in general of tocilizumab and uh, you know, not, not uh, many doses at all. No patients needed uh, vasopressors. Uh, so that was another uh, important thing. And there was no prophylactic use of, um, uh, of corticosteroids either. Uh, the other things, there were some patients who had prolonged cytopenias. 30% uh, of patients actually had prolonged cytopenias, which was uh, grade three or higher cytopenias lasting of uh, lasting at um, you know uh, day 29 following the CAR T cell product. Uh, so. Uh, importantly, another very important finding was that uh, uh, that uh, about 20 patients, so about a third of the patients, were able to get this uh, treatment and be monitored as an outpatient. And uh, there were also no difference in no notable differences in efficacy or safety outcomes between uh, patients with low HCTCI score, that is less than three or three or above. So uh, to conclude, uh, you know, lysocell as a second line treatment in patients with relapse refractory large B cell lymphoma in whom uh, stem cell transfer is not intended, uh, demonstrated high response rate, durable responses uh, in patients who achieved a complete response. And this response, these responses were seen across all pre-specified subgroups. And despite age and comorbidities of the population, there were no new safety signals. Uh, and this was also, uh, you know, we were able to do this as an outpatient as well. So thank you very much for, for listening.